It's the time when we take on the hard questions. On the panel today are my co-host Amy Schaefer from Grace Life Church in Monroeville, Pennsylvania. Here. Hello, 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 hello. Dr. William Glaze, pastor of Bethany Baptist Church, also here in Pittsburgh, Always Pennsylvania. Always a blessing. No, you Good. say amen. Amen. Do say amen. 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 <laughs> amen. amen. Pastor Lee Kreischer, who's the senior pastor at Amplified Church here in Pittsburgh. Welcome. First time on the panel. Yeah. Honored to be here. So glad Woo-hoo. that you're here. And our Cornerstones only chaplain, prayer partner, coordinator, head theology guru, Chuck <laughs> Hamby. Lord, Lord help here. us. <laughs> <laughs> Good to be here. Well, listen, let's get right into the first question. Our question today is brought to us by none other than one of our sisters Yay. in the Sister to Sister program. Yes. Amy, you know that program. Yes. You're oh, on. the one that's on Wednesdays at 10, <laughs> yeah. 2, okay. and 9? Yeah, oh. this, we're taking question time. And today the question is from Flo. Flo, what do you want to know? Hi, I'm Flo from Sister to Sister. And my hard question is, if both the Jews and the Muslims are seed of Abraham, and they both had a blessing spoken over them by God, What's the problem? Well, no, that's, that's a hard question. Abraham had two sons, or multiple sons, but we have sons. We have Isaac and we have Ishmael. Mm-hmm. Both of those men were blessed by God. Mm-hmm. Both have a covenant with God. So why are we in a situation where for thousands of years they've been at odds with each other? Who wants to start on that? Well, I'll, I'll jump in the shark tank. Yeah. <clears throat> the um, covenant that Isaac had was the covenant of Abraham, the one that God gave to Abraham, and it was passed on down. The covenant with Ishmael was a covenant that began with Ishmael, but was to extend to his family line. And God defined the entire uh, genus as as saying that they would be at war with themselves and with everyone else. Pastor. Well, you know, I would would go back to the very beginning (laughs) when you had Hagar and Sarah. Mm -hmm. And the conflict started right then. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that tension started. And as they began to uh, multiply, you know, that tension was always there because, you know, that, you know, and I think that Satan has a way of getting in things between the best, uh, between the best brothers and sisters Mm -hmm. and and corrupting it. And so I think that this is a case where that has happened in this situation too, where it started from the beginning and they never really resolved their conflicts over the years and it continues on till the day. Well, you know, the, the promise was to Abraham, I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make you famous. But there was also a promise to, um, to Ishmael, and that was, I will make also of him a great nation, but he will be hated by all nations, and he will be, I think in King James, like a wild ass on the earth. And so really two, two sons, one with the promise of God, another promise, but it was, it's, it's still the same thing, two brothers, the promised child mm. but at it's, war. It's, it's extended through the generations, it's, Pastor Lee. It's today. Well, I think, you know, often we focus on what has separated the two, mm-hmm. and appropriately so, mm-hmm. and they've been separated for thousands of years. I think what will bring them together, mm-hmm. and I think the only way people come together is under the name of Jesus Christ. Right. Absolutely. And so right. when Jesus came, it became clear that he died not just for the Jews, right. but also for the Muslims Amen. and for yeah. all the non-Jews on this earth. And I don't believe we're going to see a peace between these opposing nations Mm -hmm. without the name and the love of Jesus Christ. And that puts a great responsibility on us, those who carry his name. To to communicate that. Yes. You know, the the covenant with Isaac Mm -hmm. was to bring the Messiah. Mm -hmm. That's the the line of the Messiah was was the covenant with Isaac. The covenant with Ishmael was not that, that's where the, 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 the T is. So with the Messiah, and Pastor Lee, I think you're absolutely right. Until the Messiah, and you, Muslims 
are looking for the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think that's very interesting that they're looking for the Messiah. And that conflict is, is uh, a conflict of the spirit, not just of the genealogy, not just of the bloodline, mm -hmm. but the conflict of the spirit. And it's th interesting, Don, that in Jerusalem, two sons were offered. <coughs> uh, Muslims believe that it was uh, Ishmael. Jews and Christians believe it was Isaac. But there was another son, the son of God. And until we bow at his altar and we surrender our lives to him, there will be no peace. So even though there's a, a covenant between these two men and God, mm -hmm. that, and that covenant's not broken, God's not a covenant breaker. Mm -mm. He keeps his covenants through right. all generations. Those, those different paths lead to different destinations. And now here we are 2,000 and X years later, and we're looking at, at a place where there's physical conflict, Pastor. Right, and you, you, I think it's been aptly put that until Jesus becomes a center of both faiths, that, and, which we know is not gonna happen, but eventually there'll be a turning to Christ. And when there's a, where's that national turning to Christ, then I think there'll be harmony and there'll be peace on this earth. And that can only happen when? What's that gonna happen? Is it not, that's not gonna happen in the natural. Well, I think ultimately the coming together happens when Jesus returns. That's right. Uh, until that, the coming together can be between individuals though, mm -hmm. who, who do find the Prince of Peace yes. in their life, Jesus Christ. Yes. Some of the most exciting testimonies, I don't know if you guys have heard these testimonies, are of Muslims that are introduced to Jesus through dreams. Yes. yes. Through yes. Into, just uh, without any human intervention, <clears throat> God is revealing to them the Messiah. And, and visions. And visions, yeah, dreams, visions, without man being in part mm -hmm. of the right, equation. Right. right. And that's happening not once or twice, but by the thousand. Right. right. You know, it's interesting because, you know, I, I get the question often, how are people in, you know, faraway countries going to ever hear about Jesus? You know, are they going to go to heaven? And, you know, you think about the fact that God appeared to Moses, you know, at a burning bush. I mean, he just appeared right, to him. Right. You know, so it wasn't that, you know, anybody came and handed Moses a gospel track. You know, God just showed up and appeared and, and made itself known. And I think that that's what we're seeing. In uh, a couple of our churches in Cairo, Egypt, that we are, are partners with, they have people, Muslim women and men, running into their church saying, an angel appeared to me and told me to come here. Mm. What do I do? What do I need to do to be saved? Wow. Uh, and a Jesus appearing to Muslims in their room in mm -hmm. cars and they're telling people. I mean, it's mm -hmm. real. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yeah, and, and three or four <clears throat> years ago, an imam went on Al Jazeera and lamented that six million Muslims would be celebrating Easter this year that had never celebrated it before. Wow. Six million. Six wow. million. Wow. In wow. that one year. Wow. wow. And, we... and you know what? I believe that's why uh, Islam is on the war path. Well, because it's, again, it comes at the root of the spirit. Yes. Right. It comes at the root of the spirit. The enemy knows not what's going to happen, but he knows, he doesn't know how it's going to happen, he knows what's going to happen, and the timing is becoming relevant and apparent that Jesus is ready to come back. Father's ready to send back his son, and all of this thing is percolating. Great question flow about that covenant, the differences in that covenant. You guys did a great job explaining that. God's faithful to his covenant, but his covenants have different destinations. Amen. And we're thankful for the covenant of Abraham and Isaac because that's how we get got the Messiah that's right. That's right. and we believe that the Messiah is going to go to all the world every knee will that's bow right. every right. tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory wow. of God and that is Praise day is God. coming soon hallelujah amen we're so glad well listen thank you guys for the for the being on the panel in just a moment we're gonna have some time of prayer praying for all that you've called in and the requests that you've been making but first let's talk about what's next tomorrow on real life